Where's the carrot? Hello Nerd Squad, welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. I'm your host, Connor Monroe, and I had s'mores for breakfast. If you're new around here or have been watching and haven't hit like or subscribe, do that now. And ring the notification bell to join the Nerd Squad. You get sweet perks like knowing when our videos go live, daily. Also be sure you stick around until the end when I'm going to be reading out some comments from a previous video. We have the MCU and DCEU to bring us superhero movies, but what about beforehand? That's what we're exploring in this list of the Top 10 Superhero Movies You Won't Believe Exist. Number 10, Dr. Mordred. Dr. Mordred from 1992 was originally intended to be a Doctor Strange movie until the studio behind it lost rights. Hence why things are very similar to Doctor Strange, the dark dimension, a demonic villain, etc. When they lost the rights, they had to change most names and such, but the concept remained the same. An unspeakable evil has come into our dimension and wants to rule over Earth. Only a mysterious sorcerer known as Dr. Mordred can stop him. They also spelt sorcerer wrong in the description of IMDb. Starring Jeffrey Combs, Yvette Nepar, and Jay Akavon, this Doctor Strange parody, is it a parody? I mean, I guess it technically is. This movie has some interesting CGI, which was pretty advanced for the time, but the story, not so much. I would honestly watch this movie though. I like to think that there's an old MCU set in a reality where all the older bad Marvel movies are. I'd watch it. In a Manhattan apartment. Dr. M. Tom Mordred. Number 9, Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing actually got his own movie in 1982 before the series in 2019. The movie made more of an impact, however, generating itself a sequel. This mess directed by Wes Craven and starring Louis Jourdain, Adrienne Barbeau, and Dick Duroc got a 5.4 out of 10 on IMDb. After a violent incident with a special chemical, a research scientist is turned into a swamp plant monster. Oh good, I know what this movie is about now. My god, that's worse than some Netflix definitions. This seems like a typical case of humans being scared of what they don't understand. They literally pelt this guy with bullets, grenades, and then try to ram him with a boat, but it still doesn't do anything to him. Its sequel, The Return of Swamp Thing from 1989, makes some slight improvements on the costume, but Swampy is back to fight his foe, Dr. Arcane, once more. Swampy, away! Number 8, Howard the Duck. While you may know there was a Howard the Duck movie, you may not have known the concept behind it and how they promoted it. The trailer starts off with what was essentially Howard's Tinder profile, saying things like he's 27 years old, single but searching, his favorite sports are windsurfing and Aikido, and his favorite pastimes are cigars and sex. What? He's a duck! Sure, I mean he's from a planet full of smart ducks, but he's literally, to us, just a duck. What the duck? With Chip Zine as Howard the Duck and Leah Thompson as a struggling female rock singer who fancies him, they set out to stop a scientist who accidentally put an evil spirit inside him when he tried to send Howard home. Yeah, this has 4.7 out of 10 on IMDb, and honestly, I'm surprised they got that high. Maybe because Leah Thompson wanting to have a relationship with a duck is funny as hell. Oh, and the principal from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Jeffrey Jones, is in the movie too. He's the scientist. Just to add, this movie came out the same year as Ferris Bueller and the year after the first Back to the Future movie. Why would you guys go from those to this? I have no words other than the 207 I said before this. Number 7, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Marvel's hard-broiled hero is brought to TV. He is brought back to fight the menace of Hydra after exiling himself in the Yukon since the end of the Cold War. The children of the former Hydra head, Baron Von Stucker, have taken charge of the terrorist organization under the the lead of his vicious daughter Viper, Hydra has seized a deadly virus and threatens the destruction of America. With David Hasselhoff as Nick Fury, this would be the movie to launch the old MCU into gear. Nick Fury was brought out of retirement to save America, bro. Hydra is back and is gonna destroy America in this one, bro. Honestly, sounds like a decent movie. When Nick Fury made his debut in the MCU, David Hasselhoff said that his Nick Fury was better. Stan Lee put me in that. He gave me the best line ever. Guys like you tend to cling to the bowl no matter how many times you flush. Stan Lee came on set and told me all about Nick. He said, you're the ultimate fury. He gave me the greatest compliment ever. Well, David, considering how I didn't know about this movie until today, that makes me think that Samuel L. Jackson's is a better and proper Nick Fury. And in all honesty, he was born to play the role. Which fury do you prefer? Debate it in the comments. Come this way, Nicholas. I have something else I want to show you. Number 6, Spawn. With Spawn said to be having another release sometime soon, I bet you didn't know about the original. I will actually bet you right now. If I'm right, you have to subscribe. If I'm wrong, you get to subscribe. Deal? 
deal. Well, this 1997 film got a 5.3 out of 10 on IMDb, and the description of the movie is literally just Spawn's origin story. With a discount Thanos as the villain, there's no telling what this Hell Soldier can do. This movie has actually got some good VFX and uses a lot of CGI, so it was pretty advanced for its time. And honestly, with my love of VFX, I don't hate the CG on this. This film was directed by Mark A. Z. Dippe and stars Michael J. White, John Leguizamo, and Martin Sheen. The only real downside to this movie is the discount Thanos villain. Like honestly, his face paint looks a lot like a weird Thanos helmet, and he wears it for longer than Thanos does, cause it's face paint. Or I mean, maybe it's his skin, I don't know. And the world has a new hero. Halfway through at number 5, Fantastic Four. Before we got Chris Evans and Jessica Alba playing brother and sister on the big screen, we got Jay Underwood and Rebecca Stabb playing the two in this 1994 Fantastic Four adaptation. Starring alongside Alex Hyde White as Reed Richards and Michael Bailey Smith as Ben Grimm, these four heroes have a classic match against Doctor Doom. While the thing looks fairly terrifying and honestly looks like an emoji, the Doctor Doom is pretty comic book accurate from the looks of it, except for the spikes coming out of his hands. This getting a 3.8 out of 10 on IMDb was clearly a pretty bad movie, but how does it compare to the others? Well, the 2005 version is sitting at 5.7 out of 10, Rise of the Silver Surfer from 2007 is at a 5.6 out of 10, and the 2015 version is at a 4.3. So what do you think? Which Fantastic Four movie is your favorite, if any? Let me know in that comment section as well. Number 4, Silver Surfer Rock Opera. We may not have a Solar Silver Surfer movie, but we could have. Back in 1980, a Silver Surfer film was nearly made. It would have starred the producer Lee Kramer's girlfriend, Olivia Newton John and was going to be scored by Paul McCartney. Paul is actually a huge Marvel fan, and Jack Kirby would have been directing this movie, so it's not surprising McCartney agreed. But many details weren't discussed, and the film never got made. It was also supposed to be an opera, but not just any opera, a rock opera. Yeah, a musical Silver Surfer movie. Even the concept art is confusing, but magical at the same time. Like, who would have guessed a superhero film would be under a rock opera genre? Who said that this was okay? And can we remake it? I could be the Silver Surfer, just gotta make me shiny and I'm good. I'm already fairly pasty. Starting off our top three with number three, Green Arrow Escape from Supermax. My name is Oliver Queen, and after 10 minutes of being the Green Arrow in this movie, I get thrown in jail and need to escape with the help of fellow inmates. Yes, that's the concept behind this 2007 movie that never got made. The Green Arrow was to be framed for an assassination of a high ranking government official and gets locked up and <gasps> shaved. He later has to escape with the help of villains he himself had to put away and of course, he gets attacked multiple times in prison. Think the first 7 episodes of Arrow Season 7, but within a 1 hour and 40 minute period. It actually makes me wonder if the writers of Arrow got their execution of Oliver going to prison from this unfinished movie. The director said his favorite part of the production was designing the prison, since he majored in architecture in college. So maybe they just used some of his concepts for Slapside? Either way, if you want to watch this movie in your head, the script is available on Google Docs and stuff. Just look up the script. I am. Number 2, The Toxic Avenger. The Toxic Avenger is probably the most sultry movie on this list, and this includes Howard the Duck. And no, he's not an actual Avenger. Melvin is a 90 pound weakling that everyone hated. They teased him, taunted him, and laughed at him until he had a horrible accident and fell into a vat of nuclear waste by jumping out of a window and basically diving into an oil barrel full of nuclear waste. After this, he didn't get super good looking and everyone wanted a piece. No, he got horribly disfigured and became an actual monster with superhuman size and strength. The first hero to be created by nuclear waste, they claim. Muggers and criminals don't know the law and the Toxic Avenger was the order in this 1984 film. The most realistic part of the movie is that he gets disfigured after the nuclear waste, but the least realistic part is that he gets the ladies easier after the accident. That scene is just horrific. Number 1, Meteor Man. A high school teacher from a troubled inner city Washington DC neighborhood becomes a superpowered hero and takes on a gang that has been terrorizing his streets. He also ends up trying to form peace between the Bloods and the Crips. This 1993 movie explains his powers by a green meteor that crashed into Earth, hence the name and the green theme he has going on. All the flying he does from what I've seen is a still image pulled across the screen, like in this scene. He's come to save the world. 
one neighborhood. Like, what is that? I mean, I get it's 1993, but come on. Even Back to the Future had better effects, and that was in 1985. Honestly, to get the full effect of this movie, you'll need to watch it for yourself. It shouldn't be too hard to find, maybe? So there we have it, everyone. The top 10 superhero movies you won't believe exist. Which one of these movies shocked you the most? Which ones are you going to be watching this weekend? I'm watching all of them. Except for the Fantastic Four. If you enjoyed, be sure you hit like and subscribe for more daily nerdy content. And while you do that, because you should be, I'll read out some comments from the top 10 supervillains no one respects video. Mikey Allen said, I think you're awesome, Connor. I'm not just being nice, but if it were me, these comments would have gotten to me. <sighs> Honestly, I lay awake sometimes at night, thinking what life would have been like if they hadn't busted me out at the raid, and if I didn't like peanut butter. Yeah, that's a thing. That's what made me realize people just hate for no reason. Someone complained when I said I liked peanut butter. Well, guess what? I love it. Drew G said, don't mind the haters. Their hate can only make you stronger. Yes, whenever you hate, I actually gain another day to my life, so thank you. And I'm not even using 5% of my power. The Lord of Gaming said, I like peanut butter too. Hashtag, I like peanut butter. Let's get that trending on Twitter or something. Thank you to the person who put that hashtag in the comments. It's a good one. That's all we got time for in this video. If you're still here, be sure you comment with your unpopular opinions of superhero movies. Thank you so much for watching. I have been and shall remain Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video.